My name is Phil Waite, pastoral team leader here at College of Mennonite Church on the campus of Goshen College in Goshen, Indiana. The service you are, you are about to see was pre-recorded earlier this week. We have heard from many of you that you are grateful for these services and for the work that we are doing during this difficult time. It is meaningful to us and encouraging to us that so many of you have responded to us. We thank you for that. It is our prayer that each one of you that watches this service or listens to it on the radio, wherever you may be, experiences God's presence and God's nearness to you. We believe that Jesus is very near. And as you watch and as you listen, we pray for you and pray that God's love comes to you in a new way.
Brothers and sisters, Christ Jesus seeks to gather us in, sheltering and caring for us as a mother hen gathers her brood under her wings. As we gather by various forms of technology today, let this image of love and protection sink in. On this beautiful May morning, welcome to this time of worship at College Mennonite Church. Though we are not here together in person, none of us are alone. We are bound together in the hope and peace and love of Christ. Gloria a Dios. And we are still building this week. Remember to share your building pictures on social media. Hashtag CMC eWorship. Please join with me in the call to worship. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of, of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Let's join our voices singing in hope, number eight in the hymnal, and also shown on the screen, Brethren, we have met to worship. close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Within the last week and a half, three people from our faith community have died, Evelyn Berkey, Paul Gingrich, and Mike Hoover. In this unprecedented time when we cannot gather together as we customarily do to grieve and support one another, we find ourselves pivoting and adjusting it is still important that we name our grief, offer our cries, as well as our gratitude for the lives of these saints that have gone before us. So our prayer time together today will take a different shape as we take some time to remember Evelyn, Paul, and Mike. I encourage you to read or reread the congregational email 
that went out earlier this morning for other prayer concerns. Before we enter into this special time, I do want to share that this week, the Ganawan family learned that Caleb's two spots on his skull are improving. Caleb has undergone another round of chemoimmunotherapy this week at Riley. Please join with me in remembering and thanking God. Evelyn May Berkey died on April 28th at Greencroft Healthcare here in Goshen. She would have been 104 years old later this month as she was born on May 19, 1916 in Beamer, Nebraska. In 1934, she married Arthur Berkey in Coutts, Indiana, where they lived for 40 years, working and raising their three daughters, Phyllis, Gloria, and Jane. In 1974, they retired and moved to Sarasota. She was formerly a member of Hopewell Mennonite Church and Bayshore Mennonite Church, and began attending CMC when she and Arthur moved to Goshen in 2000. Arthur died in 2005. Evelyn was a gifted homemaker and loved to host and welcome people into her home wherever she lived. In her long lifetime, she welcomed nine grandchildren, 13 great-grandchildren, and 11 great-great-grandchildren into their family. A burial service was held on Wednesday at Hopewell Cemetery. Paul Musser Gingrich, age 90, died on April 30th. He was born in 1929 in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. He married Anne Gish Keener in 1951. She preceded him in death in 2013. Together, Paul and Anne had six children, Larry, Bob, Judd, Mike, Bonnie, and Linda. Their daughter, Bonnie, preceded them in death in 1992. Paul and Anne served as missionaries in Ethiopia for 15 years. Over his time at Goshen College in the 1970s, He served as Director of Church Relations, SST leader, and campus pastor. He went on to serve as President of Mennonite Board of Missions, now Mennonite Mission Network, for 14 years. He was a member of Assembly, Belmont, and College Mennonite Churches over his life. Before he became a member of CMC, he and Anne had served as conference overseers for our congregation. Over his life, Paul was blessed with 10 grandchildren and one great-grandchild. Paul had a jovial spirit and was well known as a visionary Mennonite church leader who exemplified a life of commitment and service to others. A memorial celebration will take place later in the fall. Michael K. Hoover, age 67, died unexpectedly at Home of Natural Causes on May 2nd. A private graveside service was held yesterday at Yellow Creek Cemetery. He was born in 1953 in Goshen, to Claire and Donabel Garber Hoover. On November 29, 1997, he married Charlotte Weaver. Charlotte survives along with Mike's father and sister, Christine. Mike was a retired computer programmer who had worked at Everance Financial. He was a gifted and dedicated musician, and he enjoyed performing with several different local groups. Mike was an avid Arsenal football supporter of the English Premier League. He enjoyed traveling, learning new cultures, languages, and flavors, and always knew how to make his family laugh. We will miss Mike and the uplifting and comforting sound of his flute 
and other instruments as a part of our corporate worship. Sometimes when our grief is especially fresh and deep, we turn to words of prayer that are most familiar to express the range of our emotions and experiences. Please join with me in commending these saints into God's eternal care as we pray the Lord's Prayer together in whatever language or version is most comfortable to you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Children, I invite you to draw a little closer to whatever device you are joining in with today as Sarah has a story for you. Okay, people, this is getting serious. We have been home for like six weeks. And this to-do list that we've had on the counter, we've done none of it. All of this changes today. I am rounding up the troops. We are all in this family. We are all going to work together. And we're going to get these things done today. Right? Because that's what happens. When you're in a family, everybody contributes. Everybody has jobs that they do. So I need the troops up here and ready to go, and I have jobs for everyone. We are getting this done today. As you can see, my family is excited and totally on board with this project today. Okay, Elliot and Ava, I need you guys to pick up the bags of salt, carry them downstairs into the basement, and put them in the water softener, okay? Go. Pull Ava. Pull up. Again. No. Mom, this is too heavy. Come on, we don't need excuses. Work together. Get those salt bags downstairs. Lewis, the lights have been out on this fan for like six months. I need you to climb up and change the light bulbs, okay? Okay. Come on, you can do it. Reach high. I'll come back and check on you in just a minute. Change those light bulbs. Okay, Seth, we have all of these pairs of socks and underwear that get stuck between the edge of the washer and the wall. Can you please climb back there and pull those out? I'm so tired of them being there. Sure, I can try. Let's see. <sighs> I can, I can get some of them, but I can't get all of them. I don't think no matter how hard I'd reach, I could get back there. Come on, there's all these things that we need to do around the house. I need everyone helping. There's no time for excuses right now. Sarah, what would you think about giving people jobs that better match their skill set? God has given us all different skills that we can use. You know, like that song? There are many gifts, but the same spirit. Okay, we'll try it your way. Let's look at the list and see if we can match each person to jobs that are a better fit for their skills and abilities. Here we go.
in our families, we all have something to contribute, and we all need to give what we can so that our families can grow and thrive. Our chores and tasks change and grow as we grow and as our strengths and abilities develop. All of our gifts come from God, and God wants us to use our gifts and talents and abilities to serve God and to serve other people. Our families are like smaller versions of the church, and just like our families need all of us to give what we have of ourselves, the church needs all of us to bring our gifts and talents so that the church is growing and thriving too. Some of us bring the gifts of preaching. Some of us bring the gifts of teaching. Others have the gifts of hospitality and welcome, and still others bless our hearts with their music and songs. And aren't we thankful for those who are sharing their knowledge and gifts of technology right now? What gifts and talents do you have? What brings joy and meaning to your life? How are you sharing those talents and abilities with other people? Will you pray with me? God, we thank you for how much you love us and for your amazing creative power. You have made each of us unique. Help us to share the gifts and talents that you have given to us so that we can bring glory to your name. Amen. Our preacher for today is Phil Waite, our pastoral team leader. Please join with me in praying. Loving God, thank you for your servant Phil and the gifts that you have given him. Your gifts are many and varied and we are grateful. Help us to learn more about your spirit's giftings as Phil shares with us today. Amen. Grace to you and peace in the name of our risen Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture for today is in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning with verse 4 and continuing through verse 13. Now, uh, now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are acted by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually as the spirit chooses. For just as the one body, just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Jews are Greeks, slaves are free, and we are, were all made to drink of one spirit.
the image on your screens, for those of you that are able to look at the, the screens, uh, uh, there are, these are field stones. They were gathered up in a field, common stones, lying in a field, lying on the ground, picked up, probably uh, using high tech, a high tech wheelbarrow, and put in a pile. And as you can see, these stones are many shapes and they are many sizes. And these common stones can be uh, discarded in, in a river or, or into a body of water or put into wood someplace, or they can be taken and they can be built into something beautiful, like this house uh, appearing on your screen. Each stone is different in size, uh, it's different in shape, it's different in color, yet each one is absolutely necessary to the integrity of the building. If a stone falls out or it comes into disrepair, uh, it needs to be replaced. No one stone is more crucial, more essential to the integrity of the building than another. And in the church, uh, this image has been offered to us uh, as if each of us were living stones, as we learned from 1 Peter last week. Living stones built together into a dwelling place for God, into a holy temple. And the body becomes a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Paul uses the language of variety to talk about uh, gifts, uh, abilities, capabilities, the different things that each individual offers to the body, to the community, to the church, all contributing to the common good. We have taken this language, language and we've spiritualized it in different kinds of ways. We've made it churchy language that seems disconnected in some ways from everyday life, the everyday life that we, that we lead, and we've become so used to it, and we've kind of, if I may use this term, quarantined it in the church or in a churchy setting and we've lost sight of how radical, what a radical idea this is. This is radical ideology. Now, I'm, I'm an idea person. I like ideas, and I like to think about ideas, and I like the world, uh, world of ideas. And uh, one of the things that we're realizing today is that ideas are very powerful. Ideas kill people, and ideas give life. Uh, I don't know if you've followed uh, how the uh, coronavirus, how COVID-19 is impacting different countries, but uh, early on in March, the United Kingdom had a public strategy, government strategy, to build what, they, what is called herd immunity. By letting COVID-19 run free in the society, uh, it would allow immunity to build, build up broadly and eventually uh, would help the public to get uh, through, uh, through the crisis. It turns out that was a bad idea based on bad ideology, ideology, ideology. And somebody came forth and said, that's a bad idea. If you do that, you're going to kill people. Don't do that. This is what will happen. And they changed course. Uh, unfortunately, the, the idea has done its damage and the UK has the, the worst death rate in Europe from COVID-19. So ideas matter. They are important. They can take life, the way we think about things uh, collectively or those in power to impose their ideas on others, impact the community at large. Paul's ideas are so radical that we are still coming to terms with them today. We still are trying to grasp what this means 
that each person offers a gift to the community that's as important as any other uh, gift. That each person has abilities that are essential to the community, essential to the common good, no matter who they are. We think, generally, as human beings, we have come to think that some people are more important than others, that some people's gifts are more valuable than others. And Paul says, no, that's not true. Now, the people in the Roman Empire were just as status conscious, just as, status conscious as we are today. Some people were obviously more important than others. And this was true uh, in the Corinthian church to whom Paul writes uh, this letter that, that, that we've read. Uh, and these people, they're arguing in the, in the church in Corinth, the Corinthian church is arguing, the people are arguing, over which gifts were the most special. Uh, people of all walks of life and all ethnic ethnicities came to the church as brothers and sisters. There was diversity. The church was a cosmopolitan uh, church. The early churches were, 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 were a mix of people. There were varieties of people. There were all kinds of stones with all kinds of shapes and sizes and colors. And those who were nothing in society, those who came with low status, were just as valuable, had gifts just as significant as the wealthy or well-educated, those who society esteemed highly. When each person walks through the waters of baptism, they shed the markers of status and identity and clothe themselves in Christ. This is the language that Paul uses. And it's radical language. Now, we human beings have a hard time relinquishing power and privilege. Those of us of higher status, those of us with positions in society uh, of honor, those of us who are well-educated, those of us who uh, have achieved according to the standards of our society are reluctant to give up that power and privilege. But Paul insists on it. Paul requires it. Without that relinquishment, the cross of Christ has no meaning. One of the questions that emerges for me as I reflect on these things is whose church is it? Whose church is it? What is the purpose of the church? Why is it here? Why do we gather? And it's often the case in a community where the people who define the purpose and the meaning of the community and the belonging of the community are the people with the most power and privilege. They're the ones who decide. In the case of the church, Paul says, this is not to be true. This is the church of Jesus Christ. This church belongs to Jesus. And Jesus says that everyone matters. Jesus says nothing is lost on the breath of God. Jesus says that whoever goes through the waters of baptism becomes one body and one with Christ and one in ministry to all the world. This is radical. This is a radical idea. This is radical ideology. And the language of relinquishing, of giving something up, of giving up control is terrifying. But it's the only way 
that a building as beautiful as a stone building, as a field stone building, can be built. The biggest rocks, the most elegant rocks, need to take their place not above, but alongside the tiny, jagged stone. We are one body, animated by one spirit. I invite you to join in, in singing. Sing the journey number, the green book number 72. For those of you who, who like to have the books at home and want to look at them, uh, the words will be on the screen. One is the body. Giving back to God through our tithes and offerings is a faithful act of worship, a way of expressing our gratitude to God for all that we have been given. The work of the church continues in vital ways in spite of the novel coronavirus. We welcome your gifts to sustain the ministries of the church. You may go to collegemennonite.org, click on Give, and you will find two main funds. The Ministries Fund, which supports the general work and ministry of the church, and the COVID-19 Fund, which supports special projects such as the food pantry, helping people to have internet access or to have rental and utility assistance during this time. Click and type and write with a courageous and cheerful heart.
Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you that you take each one of us a common field stone and you build us together as your people into a building of living stones, a dwelling place for you, a witness to the nations of your goodness and love. We offer ourselves and these gifts to you in gratitude that you have first reached out to us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. On the screen, you will see the words to Levanto Mis Manos. I invite you to sing with us. extending peace and welcome today. In honor of Mother's Day, I invite you to reach out in some form to a woman from the congregation who has made a difference in your life. We are grateful to God for all those who have mothered, nurtured, and mentored us. Receive these words of benediction. In Christ we are made one. In Christ we live into the promise of creation. Step into your week in unity with your fellow humans and with creation. Go in the peace of God. Welcome to What's Growing at CMC, the weekly segment where I, Daniel, and I, Talasha, share some stories about the seedlings that are sprouting here at College Mennonite. First, though, here's your weekly reminder that we are married, so it's okay that we're not six feet apart. 
Thanks to your generosity, the food pantry is going strong. We are also collaborating with The Window so that we can distribute food for them and help even more families. Sam Yoder connected us with a direct source for pork. So starting soon, we'll be able to give freshly butchered pork products to families in need. We get to help a local farmer and local families. Good news. The COVID-19 fund has been put to good use this week, paying some bills and connecting some internet. We got to deliver two desktop computers to families last week, and we have more available, thanks to Sandy Swartz and Druber. Tell us if you or someone you know needs a desktop computer. We are also hearing about people who are making getting groceries for the Love Shack a regular part of their week. Caleb has even been sharing some of his baked goods with the Love Shack. If you would drive past College Mennonite Church on a Tuesday or Thursday, you would see school buses. Yep, that's right. We said school buses. CMC is one of the area churches that has partnered with Goshen Community Schools to be a food drop-off site. So twice a week, school workers come here to our parking lot to pass out breakfast and lunch to the children in the Goshen community. And through them, we have been able to give out some masks to families in the community. The office staff is showing us that we can all learn new tricks. All of them have been helping each other to figure out new ways to support the work of the church. Doug Venderly has officially joined the camera crew and was just in here recording worship. He's also hard at work managing the office and answering all of your questions. Thanks, Doug, for your willingness to serve wherever you are needed. Marie and Whitney have been hard at work learning a new email and texting system so that we can keep you, College Mennonite Church, informed with the latest news and updates. If CMC is your church home and you haven't signed up to receive texts or you're not receiving CMC's weekly email, please call the church office and we will get you signed up. Thanks, Marie and Whitney. And thanks to Tina for coordinating and resourcing all of us. You know how we keep hearing stories about wildlife taking over the streets? Well, something similar has been happening in our church hallways. There are tables and chairs and pianos everywhere. The fellowship hall is full of cooking equipment. There are inanimate objects taking over our space. It's nuts. No, in all seriousness, it's all for a good cause. There is a lot of deep cleaning going on to get everything ready for an eventual return of all of you to this space. A huge thank you to our custodial staff for all of this hard work. We had a lot of new households sign up for virtual connection groups this week. Thank you for doing that. Community Life Commission is now at work putting groups together and helping those get going. Even with easing of restrictions, it will take some time for us to responsibly worship together in person. But we are happy to see the creative ways that you all are finding to be in physically distanced community. We hear that a lot of Sunday school classes are being very active virtually. We want to hear and to share those stories here. So please send them to us. There was a drive-by birthday party that Carol Greaser organized for Adrian Torres Mendez. Carloads of CMC family drove by to honk and sing and yell and wish Adrian a happy second birthday. Jared Lehman led Growing Roots in a conversation about family activities that are working during this time. We learned some interesting things. Across the board, families are spending a lot of time in nature. Like many of you, we are hiking, gathering specimens for microscopes, bird watching, scavenger hunting, making huts, geocaching. Many are going outside every day, rain or shine. One person put it this way, we are enjoying taking care of our yard instead of seeing it as a chore. Parents also report noticing their children growing in responsibility and taking initiative. We're curious about this phenomenon. Child development research would tell us that it could be related to the increased free play time these children are experiencing. Talash is geeking out now, if you hadn't noticed. But we're hearing about free art projects, inventing games, bike rides, backyard campfires, learning new instruments, and ping pong trick shots. 
Many of you are making cards and sending them to people in the church family. We would love to hear from other groups in the church about the ways you have seen God at work. So send your stories and pictures and we'll highlight you in a future week. There is something growing at College Mennonite Church. We are grateful to be walking this path with you. And we will see you next week with more stories. God was, God is, and God will be. Thanks be to God. and sowing, planting and hoeing, there's something showing, popping up through the sod. The Spirit's blowing, new life we're knowing, giving and growing in the garden of God. Reaping and sowing, planting and hoeing, there's something showing, popping up through the sod. The Spirit's blowing, new life we're knowing, giving and growing in the garden of God. and sowing, planting and hoeing, there's something showing, popping up through the sod. The Spirit's blowing, new life we're knowing, giving and growing in the garden of God.